him. And as I always say, there's no dust in these Bibles. Amen. John, I know you read yours. There's no dust in yours at all. Praise God. And repeat after me, not out of tradition, not out of habit, but truly believing with a sincere heart. This is my Bible. This is the truth. This is the whole truth. This is nothing but the truth. This is the infallible Word of God. Jesus is the Word. This is the good news. The good report. The sound doctrine. This is what believe in. Stand on. Live by. And trust in. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Yes. Praise your holy name, Lord. Praise your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the precious Lord, precious Lord, precious Lord. The songs that we sang tonight, the thoughts that were spoken of, will line up with the message tonight. I pray that God pricks your heart. I pray that the words that come forth and the scriptures that come forth are His scriptures and not mine. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the service, Lord. I thank you for each and every soul that's here tonight. Father God, we just praise your holy name, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord. It's so good when we can feel your Holy Spirit, praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for the songs, the testimonies, Lord, the good reports. Lord, we thank you for the offering tonight, Lord. We thank you for the little children that are here tonight, Lord, and the teenagers. And Father God, we thank you for the ones we haven't seen for a while that are here tonight, praise you, Lord God. We just praise your holy name, Lord. But above all else, we thank you, Lord, for Calvary. We thank you for what Jesus did on Calvary, precious Lord. And Lord, let these words touch the hearer tonight, Lord. Lord, use these, Lord. Use these words, which are your words, to draw them to you, Father. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes we can get to a point in our lives that we're at different degrees of understanding. You've heard me say this many a time. A, a church house is like a, a schoolroom. My father in Pennsylvania went to a school that first grade and eighth grade were in the same building. So when he started there at first grade, he heard all the things over and over and over and over and over and over again. Our church is like that too. We have different revelations, different word of knowledge given to each and every one. We're at different levels of understanding. That doesn't mean we're any greater or less Christian, you've heard me say this before, than one another. There's no second or third class Christians, Pappy, we're all first class Amen. in the sight of Jesus Christ, Amen. in the sight of Father God. Praise God. But you know what? Sometimes we need to get on different levels to be able to get in one mind, one accord, with our brothers and sisters. If I have a brother that's way up here, and my understanding is down here, he needs to come down here to get on my level. And vice versa, if I might be here and I have a brother or sister that's there, I need to get on their level so we can come in agreement to get things done. Amen. Praise God. One mind, one accord. Amen. In the book of Psalms, listen to this. He, concerning Father God, will regard, in other words, he listens to the prayers of the destitute. And praise be to God, here's the good news and not despise their prayer. In other words, he's not going to reject their prayers. Sometimes we can get to a point where we're destitute, and being destitute for those that have been ever out in the streets with an addiction or alcohol or some type of uh, a thing that might have overwhelmed us, and you're in the streets, you get to a point of being destitute where you're, you're almost naked to the world out there. Everybody can see you, and you've got no place to go, and you have nothing left to give. So what we do, we need to come sometimes. We're in that state of destitution and say, you know what? Lord, i got nothing, Lord. I know what I'm taught. I know what I've felt. I know what you've given me, Lord. But Lord, I cry out to you. Hear my prayers. Hear my supplications. So I want you to hear my prayers tonight, Father God. Praise God. The Bible speaks. <laughs> what kind of faith would Jesus find? And he's asking himself, what kind of faith? Will the Son of Man find on earth when He returns? What kind of faith will He find? I want you to turn to the book of Mark, if you will, ninth chapter, the Gospel of Mark. Praise God. Thank you, sweet mother. Thank you, precious Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Mark 9, say amen when you're there. 
And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. You know what? We need to run to Jesus all the time. Amen. All the time. Amen. And 16 says, And when he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And 17 says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee thy son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, he foameth him. In other words, he's tearing himself apart, foaming at the mouth, and gnashes his teeth, and penned away. And I spake to thy disciples, and that they should cast him out. In other words, they cast what's in this child out, this demon that's out, and they could not. Now I'm going to tell you something. If you read your Bibles, that's going to surprise, and would have surprised the disciples. They were out there casting out demons. They were out there, you know, raising the sick. They were out there healing people with all different kind of illnesses. But they come across this one. They come across this one where they couldn't do anything at all. So that probably came as a big surprise to the disciples, a big surprise to the people around. Sometimes when we have church, and I shared this with my brothers and sisters before, you know, we should be surprised when someone is not healed, okay? You know, we get so excited when someone gets the Holy Ghost and they get healed and they get delivered. You know what? That should be a common thing in the church today because Jesus said greater things that you'll do. Greater things. I'll be honest with you. I'd be happy with just the things he did, wouldn't you? Praise God. But he said, I spoke to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And 21 says, And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And the father said, Of a child. Ever since, I was, ever since he was a child, he had this problem. And 22 says, And oft times it cast him into the fire into the waters to destroy him. In other words, to kill him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. He was saying, if you can do anything, if you can do anything, have compassion on us. How many people know that Jesus is the Prince and King of Compassion? He is the King of Compassion. If you can do anything, Master, have compassion on me. Have compassion on my child. I don't care who you are, what kind of mother. You can be the best mother, worst mother, worst father. Worst, I don't care. When your child truly is hurting and you see your child hurt, I don't care who you are. You start crying out and people start crying out to God and say, Lord, touch my child. Heal my child. My child is sick. My child is sick. The Bible talks about uh, another part of the Bible where, where, where a, a lady brought her, her daughter that was possessed with the devil. She was vexed with the devil and all that. And Jesus cast the devil out. But you know what? So here's what I'm trying to get at. Whatever it takes, cry out to God for your children. And I know you do. Cry out to God for your loved ones. We need to get destitute sometimes saying, Lord, I don't know what the answer is, but I fall on my knees, Lord. And Lord, I know that you are more than able. You are more than able to do this thing, Lord. Save my children. Save my grandchildren. Save my brothers and sisters. Help my sister that's in need. Help my brother that's in need. Lord God, touch him right now, Lord, because all things are possible with you. But this father... said, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. I want you to say, all things are possible to them that believe. Now say it like you mean it. All things are possible to them that believe. Say it one more time. All things are possible to them that believe. And the next verse says this, and this is probably one of the most honest statements that a person could say. Straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help I find unbelief. Lord, I believe. There's a lot of us sitting here saying, I believe. 
And you are a child of God. You are born again. You are you're saved. The Holy Ghost filled. But sometimes you say, I believe. But Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, I need you to get to a different level, Lord. I need you to get to a higher level, Lord. I need to get up on that level, Lord, where you, where you see me and hear me more, Lord. I need to raise myself up, Lord. I need to get my belief up, Lord. I need you to help me get up there, Lord. Help my unbelief. We get into a situation with our walk sometimes. And you know, we, we walk and we feel like we're in cloud nine one minute and another day we, 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 we see things happening all around us and all that. And we know that God is more than able. We preach and we talk and we speak it all the time. And we speak life, not curses. But there comes a time sometimes when we get weak and whatever it may be, spiritually, mentally, physically, psychologically, all. And we say, I know God can do this. I know, Sister Geneva, God can do this. He's more than able. But Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, Lord help my unbelief. Amen. Help my unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. Sister Tanya, I know He can do it. But you know what? I need. I, I need. I need my unbelief for Him. I mean, I, I need it to get gone. I, I need my my faith to grow. I need to get up there a little higher. Help my unbelief, Brother Pepper. Pray with me. Help my unbelief. I need to get to another level. I need to get to a level where there's no doubt at all. The Word of God says in Mark, if you ask and believe, you shall receive it. Speak to your mountain. But how can we speak to the mountain? How can we believe? How can we believe that we've already received it? How can we believe that when we have that little bit of doubt? Lord, help my unbelief. I want to be like I want to be like David when he was a teenager. He had belief he was going to slay that giant. He's going to take his head. He went out there with that little slingshot. Pow! One hit. And he chopped his head off. We've got to have the belief. We've got to have the belief of Moses when he's out there. And God says, lift up that staff. And he lifted up the staff. The sea poured it. There was no doubt. No unbelief. I believe. And when Peter, when Peter, when Peter was in the room, and he put everybody out there talking about all great things that Dorcas, the tablets of did. Oh, Tom, you should have seen her. She made the prettiest coats for the kids. She made the prettiest, play prettiest shawls and all that for her. She's such a good woman. It's a shame that she's dead. And Peter says, get out of the room. Yes, come on now. Get out of the room. Get the unbelief out of the room because she ain't dead because God's going to raise her up and raise her up right now. Well, praise God. Let me tell you, we should all be praying, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. Because you know what? It's not so much our brothers and sisters. There's only one that can deliver us, and that's Jesus Christ. There's only one that can save us, and that's Jesus Christ. There's only one that will lift us up, and that's Jesus Christ. There's only one that can lift up our faith, and that's Jesus Christ. Praise God. It wasn't a message, but we'll take it. Lord, I believe. But the help thy in my unbelief. And it says in 25, when Jesus saw the people come running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. Now notice what he did here, children. Listen to what he did, brothers and sisters. He rebuked the foul spirit. He didn't talk to the convulsions. He didn't talk to the phone coming out of his mouth. He spoke to the spirit that was inside of him causing this. You know, I believe this with all my might more than ever. Mental illness, even if it's organic in the mind, something, a tumor and all that, it all stems back to Satan Amen. and the fall. Amen. Everything goes back. Every sickness there is, measles, chicken pox, all of it all stems back. He rebuked the foul spirit. He was speaking to that boy's mountain. Saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter him no more. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love long prayers. You know why? It gets me excited. I like to shout. Sometimes people say we pray too much or too long. Well, I, I don't think we do, but you know what? One thing about Jesus, he was just plain and simple. He says, get out of there. Get out of that boy. And entered no more. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead. And so much as many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand 
and lifted him up, and he arose. <coughs> Praise God. The Father admitting to Jesus. He came looking for Jesus. Jesus wasn't there. Went to the disciples. The disciples prayed. Nothing happened. The disciples later came to Jesus and said, How did this happen, Lord? We were casting out demons. We healed the sick with your name. How come we couldn't do anything this time? He said, This time come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Praise God. Praise God. Sometimes <laughs> we have to really understand who we are today. This was before they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The same power, and I'm going to share this with you right now, the same power that raised Jesus out of the tomb is the same power that the Holy Ghost has now is given to every believer in this room. Amen. Every believer has it. But Lord, help my unbelief. Do I really have what Brother Pepe has? We look at each other. Do I really have what Sister Lori has? Do I really have what Sister Joyce has? Do I really have what Brother Wayne has? Do I have what Sister Mary has? Brother Barry, Sister Tanya, Sister Jenny, the rest of you. Do I have what they have? We need to start to realize it doesn't matter what level you're on. You got it. 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 Say, I got it. Praise God. Thought just came to my mind. Paul, when he was in the Bible, I want you to take a different look at this. Paul, when he was in the Bible, he had a thorn in his flesh. Sometimes Sister Geneva says she's my thorn. But anyhow, and maybe I'm her thorn at times too. But anyhow, he said, I have a thorn in my flesh. And he had prayed, prayed that this thorn would be taken away. This would be removed from him three times. And here's what Jesus said through Revelation. My grace, listen to this, my grace is sufficient. I started to look at it a little bit of a different way. Somebody says, well, that means that the grace of God, he saved, that's good enough. So sometimes we've got to put up with those thorns. I started to come up, here's a revelation. I got, no, that's not what Jesus is saying. My grace is sufficient. If you truly believe, Paul, if you truly believe, my grace is sufficient to get rid of that thorn. My grace is sufficient to eliminate the addiction. My grace is sufficient to get you out of the bed. My grace is sufficient to lift you up. But Lord, I got this thorn. And, and Jesus is looking down from heaven looking up and saying, Boy, don't you understand? My grace is sufficient. You are covered. It's done. If you don't want it, you don't have to have the thorn anymore. Listen to what I'm saying. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Great man of God. But he prayed and nothing happened. Lord, why is this being taken away? My grace is sufficient. Amen. Trust in me. Trust in me. That's what believing in Jesus Christ is all about. That yeah. we're believing. Yeah. Cling to. Cling to. Not let go. Hold on for dear life. Yeah. To rely on. And to trust in. Trust in. Thank you, Jesus. Paul, if you really understood me, you got it almost, almost, but not quite. You really understood me. My grace that I've given you is sufficient to overcome this thorn in your flesh. Think about what I'm saying tonight. Praise God. But Lord, help our unbelief. Lord, get us at a different level. Take us to a different level, precious Lord God. You don't have to turn here, but the Bible says in Matthew 6.31, Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what you need of all these things. But here's what I want to get to, and you've heard this a thousand times over the years. But seek first, what? The kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. All these things shall be added to you. But what we got to do is seek first the kingdom. The problem is, Sister Mary, we got people coming to church and they get just a little bit of that, that, that good feeling, that little bit of, of what I'm going to call flesh enthusiasm. I got excited at church and I'm going back. I got it. I got it. I got it. 
But the first bit of trouble that hits them, they're gone. The first bit of trouble they come across, they can't, they, they're in misery and they're crying out. But you know what? Seek first, truly seek first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. Seek first. Yes. Are you doing that first? You want to know why sometimes we're putting up and why we have the doubt that we have? Seek first the kingdom. Yes. If we understand yes. the kingdom, we understand who God is, and He's a rewarder, then the diligently seek Him. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to what I'm saying. Amen. Maybe we'd have a little less doubt. We'd have a little bit more trust. And the more we trust in Him, the more we believe in Him. I shared this with you before. Brother Pepe's a strong man. If I had Pepe behind me and I said, I'm going to just drop back into his arms, I know he's going to catch me. I think. <laughs> I know he's able to, but will he really catch me? Or will he really slip? Or will I go back too fast? Or will he move back a little bit and let me hit this hard floor? Praise God. I better be in the spirit, right? <laughs> but you know what? Lord, help my unbelief. Help my brothers and sisters' unbelief. Help this church's unbelief. Sometimes we come in, we have a few people in the service. Youth service, we just had a couple of people the other night, wasn't it? But we still had a good youth service. And we've been in nursing homes, Sister Jenny, you know, sometimes there's just been two people that have been there. That's okay. Because what next time there might be 30 there. Next time there might be 40 there. Praise God. It ain't about the numbers. It's about what we're doing for God. Lord, help my, help my unbelief, Lord. So when we get up here, when we start preaching the Word of God, and then this is to, to you over there at the corner too, when you're looking out, there might not be a large group of people out there, but you know what you do? You have to say, Lord, you've given me a vision, and I see this whole place filled. I see a filled on Sunday morning. Sunday morning seems to be our lowest attendance and all that. We had a good attendance today, but no one. We're going to fill this house up with children. We're going to fill it up with souls, and souls will be saved. Praise God. I'm talking about Sunday mornings. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Word of God says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, Tanya, and it shall be done to you. But here's the whole thing. Abiding... Abiding in God and having His words live and abide in you. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to turn to Matthew 7 for a second. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Thank you, sweet Father. Lord, help our unbelief tonight. Lord, help us eliminate any unbelief. The Bible said that Jesus could not do any great works in his hometown. Now I'm going to add this to it. Everybody that came to him was healed. Everybody he touched was healed. 100%. All types of diseases. 100% all cured. But the ones that did not come to him, the ones that did not believe were not healed because you know why? They didn't believe. They had God walking in the flesh right past them. Didn't believe. Didn't believe at all. 724 Matthew says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and what? Do them. If you love me, what's the next? Keep my commandments. If you love me, obey me. If you love me, obey me. Brother Ray, or he would say, Son Ray, if you love me, obey me. Keep my commandments. Barry, if you love me, keep my commandments. Sue, if you love me, keep my commandments. Patty, if you love me, this is what he said, keep my commandments. So if we do keep his commandments, here's what, what's going to happen. Listen to this. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Say rock. rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house. That's what life does to us. This is an analogy of life. How many people has had the rain come down upon them? How many people has had the flood come up? How many people have had the winds blow on them? How many people have had it all come onto your house? Praise God. And it said, it what? It fell what? It fell not. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell not. 
for it was founded upon the rock. Say, that rock is Jesus Christ. Praise God. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and does not them, or does them not, shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You know what? We have the greatest cornerstone that's ever been around. Yes, Our house is built on a solid foundation. We are standing on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Here's what I'm getting at. Brother Ray, what does it have to do with faith? What does it have to do with that lack of faith? Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help it. If we truly understand who are we standing upon, what word is inside of us? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, and we're standing on the rock that's not going to fall, it don't matter how hard it rains, it doesn't matter how fast the wind comes, or how it comes, I ain't moving. We sing that song, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. And we stand with the power that Jesus Christ has put inside each and every believer. It's not hype. Somebody told me one time, it's like brainwashing. I said, no, it's Jesus washing. Amen. He washed us clean. Yes. He got rid of all this dirty stuff up here. Yes. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When it becomes renewed in here, it becomes renewed in here. Yes. He starts to show out here. Yes. Trusting, in Hallelujah. Trusting Thank in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We need to pray. We need to fast. But you know what? Praying isn't going to do anything. Got silent. Fasting isn't going to do anything. If we're not standing on the rock. Amen. Amen. If we're not trusting in Him. And if His words are not abiding in us, we can pray all day long. But I'll rely on Sister Tanya's faith. She'll get, he'll get me through. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. I'll rely on Sister Geneva's faith. Don't get me through. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. You know who has to have the faith? We have to have the faith. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. He didn't say help the unbelief of the disciples. Help the unbelief of the ones that were watching. Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. Let me mature a little bit more, Lord. Let me mature a little bit more. Praise God. I repeat this a lot and say this a lot. I don't want you to turn here. <laughs> Listen to this. Wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with so a great a cloud of witnesses. These are our brothers and sisters around us. It says, lay, let us lay aside. Listen to this. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beseed us, and let us run with the patience the race that is set before us. Yes. And it says, looking into Jesus, say Jesus. Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Say the author and finisher of our faith. Well, what does it mean, finisher? It means the perfecter of our faith, the maturity of our faith, the one that's going to get us mature. He might be the beginning of it, but you know, he's the one that's going to bring us into maturity of it too. Lord, help my unbelief. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I do want you to turn to Galatians 2, 24 a second. If we understand that the faith that we have really is not our faith to begin with, it's the faith of God, from God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Galatians 2.20. Not Galatians, but Galatians. G-A-L-A-T-E. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Listen to what it says here. Let's take it real slow. I am crucified with who? Christ. Nevertheless, who lives? I live. Yet not I, but who? Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh... I live by the what? Faith. faith. Now, who's the faith of? The faith? Wait a minute. I'm living by the faith of the Son of God? 
So is this telling me that the faith of the Son of God is in me? Yes. Is that what that's, is that what that's saying to you? Yes. So the faith of God is, 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 is inside of me. Well, man, if that's the case, Brother Wade, he raised the dead up. He cast out demons. He healed the sick. Everybody he touched and spoke to was healed and delivered. Hallelujah. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Of the Son of God. It doesn't just say I live by the faith in the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. One little word makes a big difference. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help her unbelief. Help her unbelief, Lord. Lord, I pray, Father God, that everybody in here, Lord, comes to the understanding that we can have more of you, Lord. We can have much, as much of you as we want, Lord God. Lord, I hunger and thirst for you, Lord. I want my brothers and sisters to hunger and thirst for you, Lord. Lord, open up your word. Open up your written word, oh Lord. Give us revelation of the meaning and understanding of it, Lord. Lord, I don't want to have any type of lack of faith, Lord. Lord, Father God, help my brothers and sisters. Help my unbelief, precious Lord God. Help my unbelief, Lord God. So, Lord, when I pray with somebody and lay hands on them, and they lay hands on me and pray for me, oh, Lord, that we can cast out sickness of any type. We can cast out demons of any type, precious Lord God. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to close out with one little story. It may not really apply to what we've been preaching about, but I don't know if any of you have ever heard of David Paul Yangi Cho. He had the largest Pentecostal church in Korea at one time. It's been succeeded since then, but he had 830 members in 2007. Here's why I wanted to share this with you. He was raised in South Korea as a Buddhist. And he was a Buddhist. His family was a practicing Buddhist. And at the age of 17 years old, he had a sickness that was going to take his life. Passing by his house, there was a 17-year-old Christian girl that did not say, help my unbelief. She believed. She believed she could do what Jesus did. Amen. God drew her to the house. She knocked on the door. And she said, I came here to pray for somebody. And the woman says, my son is sick. And she was Korean herself. She went in, talked to the 17-year-old boy, spoke to him of Jesus Christ and said he was a healer. Told all the great stories that she could tell in that short period of time that she was there about his healing power. And she said, I want to put my hands on you and pray for you. In Jesus' name. Do you believe that he'll heal you? And he said, I believe. And she took that 17-year-old Buddhist boy off of his deathbed. Years pass, he ends up with 830,000 people in a church, a Pentecostal church, preaching the Word of God. Preaching the Word of God. Just took one prayer for one little girl that went by that house. We all witness to people. We can all testify to people. But maybe we ought to get rid of some of this unbelief and just pray, Lord, get rid of this unbelief. Get rid of it all. Get rid of it all, Lord. So when I go to a stranger's house and they're sick, I can say, you know what, I know a healer. And he doesn't work at Mercy Hospital. He doesn't work at the Cleveland Clinic. You know what, if, if you allow me, and you allow this one to touch you, when he touches you, you'll never be the same again. He'll deliver you of this depression. He'll deliver you of this addiction. He'll deliver you of this sickness. And he'll heal you right now today. Can I pray for you today? Do you believe he'll do that? I don't mean just somebody saying, well, go ahead and pray. But if they earnestly have their heart pricked by God. See, nobody can come to God until the Father pulls them. But you know what? Maybe that's the invitation right there. We don't know why God sends us to certain people. But you know what? I want to get a little bit bolder. Somebody said, well, you're too bold sometimes. I want to get a little bit bolder to be able to go. And I want all of you to get a little bit bolder. I don't want you going around smacking people in the head and things like that. But get a little bit bolder and say, let's witness a little bit. Let's talk to them about God's mercy and His grace. Let's talk about His love and His, and, 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 and his forgiveness. 
Yeah. And say, you know what? <laughs> we have a God that's so loving. He'll love you. He'll be with you. And you know what? He's the great healer. The great physician. Can I pray for you tonight? But you know what stops us from doing that boldness? Be bold as the Lion of Judah. <laughs> you know what stops us from being bold? My unbelief. My unbelief. I need to get rid of my unbelief. This guy here. And you need to do the same thing. It's time to get rid of it. But was it a great omission by that father? Lord, help my unbelief. Most people wouldn't have said that. So do you believe? Yeah, I believe. And you keep your mouth shut. If you don't believe in something, that's okay. Let us know. You know why? We can pray for understanding. We can pray for revelation. We can pray that maybe we can get you up to that level a little bit and say, oh no, look at this. Two minds, <laughs> one accord. If two agree on any one thing, we can bind it on earth and listen to earth as is done in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's get to the same level. Let's get to the same level. There's people today, and I did have this in my notes, and it just came to my mind, so I'm going to share it. Personal experience. Mary's heard this before. I'm in a hospital, in Elyria Hospital. I don't know what floor I was. We went in, there was an elderly man that wanted us to go up and pray for his wife. His wife was in the bed. And uh, she was a Christian for a number of years, but she had a little bit of a, a problem. And uh, I'm just going to use the word addiction problem. And she had a little bit of a problem, and she would backslide, go back and forth, church, back and forth. But she was filled at one time with the Holy Ghost, fake in tongues and all that. She's in the bed. Myself and three others came up. And we come on up. He wants us to pray for her. And someone had asked her, Are you saved? She goes, yes. And I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ just recently. I know he's going to get me well. And the person said, you know what? If you really believe that, you'd be out of that bed right now. God is a now God. Amen. Now faith. You get out of that bed right now. Yeah. And she couldn't get out of bed. He said, you know why you can't get out of bed? You don't have enough faith. You don't have enough faith. If you truly believe him, you get out of bed right now. And it was that kind of attitude. He went over and sat down on the bed next to his girlfriend. And there's another man I respected dearly. He, he was quiet, but he got up and he said, Well, yeah, it takes faith. And if you really truly, what he said was true, if you had the faith. And God spoke to me and said, Stop it right now. Stop it right now. This is when I was brand new in the ministry. So this is not of God. Stop it right now. I remember I stood up and said, Shut up! I'm going to tell you what the Lord is telling me. Compassion! Have compassion on this lady! Have compassion on her! And I said, Let's all pray for her right now. And I went over and we laid hands on her and we prayed a prayer of faith. And we prayed a prayer of healing for her. As we're going out to the parking lot, this one person in the back says, Well, those prayers didn't go anywhere. I'm going to tell you something. Everybody's at a different level. She did get well and get out of that hospital bed three days later. But I'm going to tell you something. Not everybody is at that same level. And for a minister of God, I don't care who they are, how old they are, how long they've been in the Word or what. You know what? I'm not going to pray for you because you don't believe or if you believed enough, you'd get up and walk. God have mercy on That's not of God. How many people understand that? That's not of God. Yeah. I hear it preached in churches. I hear it preached in, 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 in services all the time. You know what? I pray for a lot of people. Even when I doubt it, those prayers did go anywhere. But you know why God had me still praying? To give that person some comfort and peace in here. See, he's the Prince of Peace. Yes. He's the peacemaker. And, and, and I'm just using you as an example. This lady is down there. Maybe I can pray for her that she feels the peace of God. But maybe next time she'll come back to church. And then maybe she'll truly come up in faith and say, you know what? 
I want to receive. Hallelujah. I want to receive. You said, you said, if I come re- looking and want to receive, I can receive. I come tonight to receive. Tonight's my night to receive. Tonight's not my night to receive. But oh Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. I'm talking to myself, not you. Help my unbelief. And you need to talk to yourself. Greater things you'll do. Jesus said that. Greater things you'll do. You know what? If Jesus raised the dead, happy, you and I should be able to raise the dead. Think about that. Touch the lame. Be like John and Peter walking <laughs> at the gate of beautiful near it. And the, and the beggar there begging for alms. It says, silver and gold I have none but such as I have. Look at us. Look upon us. Look upon, look upon, this is Peter. Look upon John. You're, look upon me, Peter. Look upon us. Silver and gold I have none but such as I have. I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Praise God. Our faith has a lot to do with it. Yes. Our faith, the one that's praying, has a lot to do with it. Yes, Their amen. faith, the one that's going to receive and intercept with her, has a lot to do with it too. But if the person is doubting and the preacher is doubting, there's no faith at all and nothing's going to happen. That's right. But praise God, we've already felt it here, felt it elsewhere. Yes. When we come believing, we come in one mind, one accord, amen. we can touch somebody's back and the back is still. We can touch their ears and the ear is not hurting anymore. We can touch them and they'll rise up. We've seen it happen. But I don't want it to be just a once in a while thing, sister. I want it to be an everyday thing. I want it to be so great where we're just applauding and something like that happens. And you get other people saying, man, that was a miracle. Say, no, that's God working. We do it all the time. Jesus does it all the time. We do it all the time. It should become the norm. We should just get excited when something doesn't happen. But we think reverse, don't we? Yeah. We think reverse. It says, don't sit in the wheelchair. Oh, no. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to be bought in wheelchairs, haven't we, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Will you stand with me tonight? Yeah. Yeah.